So I've had the opportunity over the last 24 years to lead and mentor literally thousands and thousands of people, most of which are ages 17 to 21. Anybody here 17 yet? A lot of people. <laughs> okay. Character, man of character. There's one breed in particular who made a lasting impact on my life and my career. I'm gonna tell a little story about it. His name is Lance Corporal Smith. Lance Corporal Smith was one of my Marines back in 1998. I had just picked up Sergeant about a year prior. We were getting ready to go into deployment to the Mediterranean. Smith made a big impact on me because he was an outstanding Marine. Out of a platoon of about 50 people, he was the number one guy. He was our go-to guy. Looked sharp in uniform, reliable, respectful. I'd say he worked hard, but that's kind of overutilized that, that saying. I'd say he worked really smart. He was more productive than anybody else. So I made a decision. I decided that when we, how, when we started putting rooms together, who's going to live where, that I was going to put, we had three man rooms in the barracks. I decided I was going to put Lance Rubble Smith in a room with my two horse marines. The two guys that couldn't show up on time, had bad attitudes, couldn't get him to look square man uniform, couldn't get him to get a haircut. I decided I'm going to move Smith in that room with him so that he can influence them. A couple months go by, the other two Marines seem to be coming around, getting a little bit better. But then all of a sudden I get one day, I get called into, I get told I gotta go see the Sergeant Major with all three of those Marines. The Sergeant Major is a senior enlisted Marine of the entire unit. I take the Marines there, and the Sergeant Major starts reading their rights, because all three of them got positive for drugs on the urinalysis. This Marine, Lance Corporal Smith, I couldn't believe it. My go-to guy, should have been a sergeant in three years. It, all three of them, the, the, the two Marines that weren't that really good, probably should have never came in, in the first place, they weren't shot. However, Smith, devastated crying, tears flooding down his face because he loved what he was doing. After we left, I was, I was so mad and sad at the same time. I'm like, Smith, why would you do that? I mean, Smith could have been a sergeant in three years, could have retired, he could have got out of the Marine Corps, or excuse me, he could have gotten out in four years as a sergeant after having been picked, picked at any point of the could have picked it up easily in three years. I could have been touchy just thinking about what he threw away. He could have retired at age 37 because he came in the Marine Corps at age 17, just like I did. He threw it all away. I'm like, Smith, now not only are you not going to finish your time in the Marine Corps, no one's going to want to talk to you. No one's going to want to talk to you, let alone hire you to do a job that takes any kind of competency because you have a, a bad discharge on your record. Character. We're going to circle back to that, the purpose of that story. Something I want to tell you, this is fact, okay? The male brain does not fully develop until approximately age 26. Yeah, I see a few of you writing, because that's a little ways for most of you guys. For some of us, we're well past that day. For those in the back. 26, 27 approximately for me, I think it was probably even later than that, if I'm being dead honest with you. Okay? Now, here's the hard part for you guys. Okay? The part of the male brain that doesn't fully develop until age 26 plus is the part that helps you think through the second, third order effects of decision making. Okay? The 
part that helps you think about the future when you're making decisions. So a young guy goes to a party and thinks, you know, I'm going to do this kickstand. I'm going to give this girl as much alcohol as I can so I can take advantage of her. I'm going to take this bicycle. I'm going to do after I do this kickstand, do these drugs. I'm going to get this bicycle. I'm going to jump off the roof of this house and into the pool with this bicycle. <laughs> I'm going to look really, really cool. I'll get a really, really good reputation. I know it was mentioned earlier. Everyone will want to be my friend. I'll be the life of the party. I'll get more girls. But what the young guy doesn't see, because of the part of the brain, the part of the hypothalamus or whatever, that isn't fully developed yet, he doesn't see or think about, should I miscalculate that jump with that bike or that skateboard? or the effects of the alcohol, or whatever. If he miscalculates that, or the drugs, whatever it is, say for now, for the, for the bike, and he miscalculates it, he doesn't think, well, if, I, if I'm slightly off, he doesn't think he can break both legs, go to the hospital, lose his scholarship, his ROTC scholarship for the military, or his football scholarship, or get kicked off the team, not be able to work, therefore not be able to pay for his car, therefore not have one, his girlfriend who's used to riding around the car probably isn't gonna be there much longer. He doesn't think these things through all the way because of that part of the brain. Am I making sense, everybody? So before you make decisions, especially ones involving terror character, try your hardest gentlemen to see long distance, okay? I mention it because, again, I've told you, I've had the, I've been blessed to lead and mentor thousands upon thousands your age, okay? Um, and I see it repeatedly over and over again. So, because you have phenomenal people in your life, like Coach McCoy, Master Gunnery Sergeant Ross Blaine, who's a, a great friend of mine, I've known him for almost 20 years, um, your teachers, your parents, I'm not gonna tell you what it means to have good character, okay? Because I know you hear that already. But what I'm gonna tell you is how you can create and maintain good character, okay? Because it's much, it's much easier said than done. Much, I mean, it's, it's hard, okay? We're gonna learn this in three steps. I call it Sergeant Major Garcia's three steps of character. <laughs> I appreciate everybody that's actually writing this down. So, step one. This is, this is very important. You must have an ambition that is so important that you would not risk it for anything. See, gentlemen, I've got news for you. Your character is going to get tested on a day-to-day -day basis for the rest of your life, okay? And I'm not going to sugarcoat it or fluff it up or anything like that. i got news for you again. The older you get, the harder it gets. And it doesn't matter if we're talking about the temptation of drugs, sex, alcohol, crime, whatever it is, your character will get tested. I didn't come here to deliver you a moto speech, okay? I came here to give it to you straight. Your character will get tested over and over again. It's gonna get harder and harder again. But if you have an ambition, something you wanna accomplish, ambition is another word for goal. But today, I'm gonna to use the word ambition because the word goal is often overutilized and people kinda of get turned off by it. It doesn't get the respect it deserves. But you must have an ambition, something that is so important to you short-term and long-term, that you wouldn't risk it for anybody or anything. When you have that, you will avoid the temptation of the things I mentioned previously. That's step one. Step two. Mind. Pay close attention to. Be very selective of the people you spend your time with. an 
outstanding group. I'm really actually impressed that you're writing this down. Now, I'm going to go full circle back to the story I gave earlier. When I'm yelling at this guy, Smith, I'm like, Smith, why did you do that? Why would you risk that? And he says to me, he gave me the good brain answer, first of all. He goes like this. He goes, Sergeant, I have no excuse. And then later we're talking, and he goes, but I will say this. If you hang out with dogs, you get fleas. Hang out with winners if you want to become a winner. Spend time with people, make friends with people who are going where you want to go or who are already successful in the things you want to accomplish. Take note of the people you spend your time with now. There's a good chance I would bet a paycheck on it that you probably walk like them, talk like them, dress like them, have the same mannerisms as them. You're probably exactly like them. So, Take that into account. If you hang out with successful people, you will become successful. It will be that easy. Step three, and possibly the most important step. Who here has ever heard of the word karma? <laughs> Almost everybody. Okay, listen. Step three, respect and work with the law of karma, also known as the law of cause and effect, the law of psychological reciprocity, and the list goes on. Respect the law of karma. Here's, I'll tell you both sides of this, okay? Good, excuse me. Bad thoughts, bad deeds, bad words, bad intentions, bad actions can only lead to bad results for you personally. Someone who bullies somebody else, someone who steals from somebody else, <coughs> someone who does wrong to somebody else, treats somebody poorly, cheats, lies, whatever it is, will reap what they sow. Make, most likely not from that person, but it will come back to you because that's just the law. Call it karma, call it God's law, call it universal law, whatever you want to, but it must come back to you. The prisons are filled and overfilled with people who thought they could evade this law. And the thing is that we could probably evade the laws of man for a bit, but we could never permanently evade universal law. However, the flip side of this, the same goes true for you. Good actions, good words, good intentions, good deeds will come back to you many fold. When you got in your way to help someone who's struggling in school with something you're good at, it will come back to you many fold. When you go home and you grab your trash can, your mom or dad or whoever tells you, hey, take the trash can in, you go to grab your trash can off the curb, you take it back, you see the neighbor's trash can sitting there. You got your trash can too. You wheel the trash can back to them because they're older than you or you respect them or whatever. It must come back to you. You help the old lady next door cut her grass or you volunteer your time, donate some money, whatever it is, it must come back to you. Not only that, it will come back to you many fold. Most likely, it will not come back to you from that person. Most likely, it will not come back to you right away. But it must come back to you. Because that's just the law. That's universal law. So, today, we learned a little bit about the male brain. We learned Sergeant Major Garcia's three steps to character. And in closing, I want to leave you with one final thought. I think everybody here, at least all the students, you're all young enough that you're, when I tell my new joint Marines, I tell them you're in a clean slate in life. Clean slate, meaning I don't think any of you have ever declared bankruptcy before. I don't think any of you have ever had a car or a house repossessed. 
I don't think any of you have ever been through a divorce, mistakenly on accident had a child. Most of you look like you're in good health. I don't think any of you have had probably any, any life-threatening situations, maybe one or two of you. You have what I call a clean slate, okay? But all that starts to change the minute you make poor decisions, especially decisions regarding sex and alcohol. I'm just gonna give it to you straight. Is that all right? This is the men's group, right? I'm gonna give it to you straight. Once you make poor decisions, fall the temptations of crime, cheating, I don't know, stealing, whatever it is, you know what that is. Let the bell beat shut up, huh? All right. But the flip side goes true for you. You keep the slate clean, okay? I'm only here and I've only had a successful career because, you know, I waited to get married. I didn't have a child until I was, you know, 33. You know, I avoided the temptations. It wasn't easy, trust me. And a few times I fell for it all. But luckily somebody picked me back up. If you keep the slate clean and make good decisions, you literally can have, do, or become anything you want. Even if you don't know how to do it, you can do it. Even if you don't think you can do it, you can do it. Whatever it is you want to accomplish in life, I don't care if you want to be a doctor, a football star, a rock star, a dentist, a lawyer, a teacher, whatever it is you want to do, you can do it even if you don't think you can, as long as you keep the slate 